We are a few cables lengths away from Manhattan, in the Long Island Sound, where surprising works are about to start in a few hours. On a pilot boat, here's Patrick Bart, one of the managers and ship owners of the Skagerrak, the biggest cable ship in the world. The Skagerrak belongs to a French group, which holds a leading position in the manufacturing and the laying of all kinds of cables. Today we're in New York and in three months we'll be in Abu Dhabi and in a year we'll be in China. We sail every sea. This time, the mission of the crew of the Skagerrak is to replace the old underwater cables which connect Long Island Power Station to a small city in Connecticut. There are 19 kilometers of electric cable buried in the seabed. One small detail, the cables will have to go through a small island before they can reach dry land. In fact, originally the Skagerrak was a barge which was converted about 30 years ago by fitting a motorized 7,000 ton revolving platform, turning it into a real cable ship. It was modified to lay one of the first underwater cables in the North Sea in the Skagerrak Strait, hence its name. In order to better understand what's lying at the bottom of the oceans, let's head towards the south of Norway, not far from the Skagerrak Strait. That's where these long black snakes are manufactured. Several months before the laying operations in the United States, we have arranged to meet Patrick Bart at the far end of Halden Fjord, which is the port of registry of the Skagerrak. The cable men can't stop touching the cables, even when there's tar on them. It's a bit of a nightmare. But never mind, it's all good stuff. The underwater cable manufacturing plant looks like a giant weaving mill. The sole of the cable, the copper wires, intertwine before being covered in plastic, tar and rope. This creates a thick sheath which is supposed to protect the cable from underwater aggression. It's almost impossible to go and repair a cable or to join two cables at the bottom of the sea. So we make one long cable. For instance, for the cable we're going to lay to New York, there were three cables, because there will be three cables laid side by side, and each cable is over 19 kilometers long. It's an average length for that kind of factory. For your information, last year we made a cable which was 156 kilometers long. So making one long cable with not a single defect is probably the most difficult thing to do. Once it's stored in the factory, it will take another week before the long copper snakes wind around the revolving table on the main deck of the Skagerrak. This cable ship is the only one capable of loading 50 kilometers of underwater cable. The Skagerrak can carry 7,000 tons of cable. With all this weight on it, the ship will take more than a month to cross the Atlantic and to get to the east coast of the United States. I saw it was almost four years ago and uh, it looked like nothing I'd ever seen before. It was a very strange ship to me and 
didn't think it looked very nice. <laughs> like, is it a little ugly or is it just me? <laughs> but you kind of, uh, it has a, it is a ship with a soul. So you kind of grow fond of it and uh, you get used to it with all its uh, strange ways to walk and everything. But once you learn to know the Skagrak, you love her. Based in Oslo, the Norwegian capital, Nina is one of the only women on board. However, she takes part in every decision made regarding the laying of the underwater cables. In the meantime, Patrick Bart is still inspecting the ship. The works that have just started are estimated at 80 million euros. Since their American clients are very detail-oriented, the Skagerrak crew cannot make a mistake. Rich, can you move the vessel six meters astern? This is the cockpit of the Capjet. It's the robot you can see at the bottom of the sea on the top right screen. At the moment it's on the cable and it's digging a two meter deep trench at the bottom of which will be laid the cable in order to protect it. The Capjet moves forward and is piloted by these two operators. Skagerrak places itself automatically according to the Capjet, thanks to a wave system fitted on the robot, which enables the Skagerrak to know where it is any time. Progress is rather slow, but it's entirely automated. So in fact, by making the Capjet move forward, the two operators also make the Skagerrak advance. In the water, there are several lunar vehicles which search for possible obstacles. With all the stones, mud, pollution, and lobster pots in the Long Island Sound, the operators of the Skagerrak often have to pull their strange machine up to clean it. After a week's work, the first cable is unwound and buried. But now, there's a trickier operation in progress on the rear deck. The second cable is about to get back onto dry land. Yeah, we have uh, 700 floats that we're going to use to float the cable out. And it's a... Uh, challenge to get all the floats in a smooth uh, speed. Once the cable starts moving, it's very uh, consuming for uh, labor. So we need all hands on deck to get the operation going as smoothly as possible without stopping. So the cable can just continue. So we don't have to stop because of this. So we need many people on deck. So we have some Americans that are helping us as well because we're not enough manpower here on deck ourselves to do it. So, as you can see, there are many people on deck, and uh, it's a little bit chaotic, but uh, once we get started, it's, uh, everything is going uh, very smoothly and very good. Time goes by. Meter by meter, the device is on its way towards the shore. While part of the Skagerrak crew is on the deck to follow the movements of the cable, Others, at water level, make sure the cables are properly tied to the boat. At that moment, the cable mustn't sink. Several small motorboats are moored to the underwater cable to counter tidal currents. Slowly but surely, the long black snake is making its way towards a tiny island. It's calm and deserted, for the moment. We have to keep a vigilant eye out for what we can find at the bottom of the sea, and beware of all kinds of different containers lying there don't create any pollution. There is permanent surveillance from authorities who are on the Skagerrak during the laying and the production. Moreover, special units circle the ship and constantly take sea samples to make sure there is no pollution. Meanwhile, on the Skagerrak, 
Nina is about to relax for a few minutes. We are floating the cable end over to the island where divers will receive it and remove the floats. And the cable will go over the island and over to that barge you see over there on the right side. And then we will float out uh, maybe two and a half kilometers of cable and all that will be spooled on board the barge. So it's quite a lot of cable being spooled. And uh, when we're done with that, the cable will continue to install, or the barge will continue to install the cable across the sound. Because on the inside of the island, it's too shallow for the Skagerrak to get in. Once the cable is pulled onto Sheffield Island, there's still another 10 hours work to finally join the mainland, and therefore, the power plant. It's very cold. It's late, but on the shore and on the Skagerrak, the crews are relieved. Within the next three months, a power line will link Long Island to Connecticut once again. Accommodation is, is not, not very good, but people like this ship. They like to work here, and they're very pleased. Uh, out of uh, 48 cabins, there are only four cabins with own uh, toilet and, uh, and shower. But that's not the main thing. The main thing is that the people like their work. They, they like the social uh, way it is on board. Yeah, I like this ship very much. It's a good old lady. In the next five years, there will be as many cables laid at the bottom of the seas as in the last 50 years. Captain Gutgorn and his high-tech old lady will therefore not be retiring just yet. <laughs> <laughs>